Amen. Can we all stand this morning? Worship with Danny as he leads us in worship this morning.
Second week, last week we uh, began a series, uh, if you're visiting with us, I tend to preach in series format, as God leads, and uh, last week we began a series entitled Puzzled, as you see on the screen, Puzzled. All of us have experiences in life where things just really don't seem to fit or add up. They just aren't what they seem and they leave us puzzled. Anybody else have that reality? Life's just going good and then all of a sudden... Boom, something just doesn't fit. It's much like, as we talked about last week, it's much like working a puzzle. And I brought a puzzle that belongs to my kids, not me. I do love Paw Patrol, but last week we spread out pieces of the puzzle on the table here. And we talked about how sometimes life is like a puzzle. We have a plan of how it should work, what it should look like. Where the pieces should go. And maybe we look at our life or as a puzzle and we say, okay, I'm going to start with the border first. I'm going to get the border pieces done. I'm going to get the ones with the straight edges done and then I'll fill in the gaps. Or maybe you put colors together. You group together colors or images. And the puzzle just starts going together and life is good. You're just going about life and God's just working everything out the way you want it. And then, bam, you get this piece. You get this piece in the puzzle, and it just doesn't fit anywhere. And we talked about how last week we even, sometimes we try to make it fit. That seems to work. It's actually pretty close. We even say that. You know what? Ah, ah, that'll work. It's not how I envisioned it, but ah, it fits good enough. We get this piece and something happens unexpectedly. The death of a loved one, unexpected, as Sister Donna had pointed out. Or maybe we get that medical report that we didn't want. Or maybe we lose our job or something happens in a relationship. And this just doesn't seem to fit. And we don't understand it because this is the present reality. This is the now And we want to see the then. Let me show you the scripture. We looked at this scripture last week in 1 Corinthians. It says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. This piece is fuzzy. We don't understand why this piece looks the way it does. God, why? This doesn't fit in my life and my plan. Then the Bible says, then. We shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known by God. It doesn't make any sense to us why this peace came up in our life. We don't understand it. Why? And I told you we did this a a similar uh, scenario and game at kids camp. Y'all would remember? Because if you don't see the puzzle as it should be, it's hard to understand where these certain pieces go. God sees this, which is the then. We only see the now. We see today. But we have to trust him with our tomorrows. We can't, I told you this last week, we can't put faith in how we think things should turn out. Or even how it looks like it might turn out. I have faith that one day I'll be able to retire maybe. Play with grandkids. But if God doesn't see how that fits in the puzzle of my life, then I just have to kind of go with the flow. I hope that's my then, but I can't say for certain that that's my tomorrow. We can't put faith in how we think things should work out. We can't put faith in how we think the puzzle should look for our life. We have to put our faith completely in God. 
That's what we talked about last week. Today we're continuing kind of in that same format, that same uh, context as we look at Matthew chapter 14. If you grab your Bibles, we're going to look at a very familiar story. It'll be on the screen as well. Matthew 14, beginning in verse 22. You know this story. This is a good one right here. One of my favorites. The Bible says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land. So Jesus has told his disciples, hey, y'all go on ahead of me. I'll catch up. I got some things to take care of. And while he's up there praying by himself, the boat is, the Bible says, a considerable distance away, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. We know how this plays out. What an amazing miracle. Jesus walking on the water. Verse 26, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. If it's really you, then let me join you, Peter says. In verse 29, come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat, listen at this, catch this right here. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. May God add his blessing to his word this morning. As we dive into week two of this puzzled series, it's important for us to note something here in the text. When I was looking at this and reading and studying and looking at commentaries and uh, scholars and their opinions on this, a phrase that I pointed out here in the reading is, the Bible says that the boat was already a considerable distance away from the land. Jesus has told his disciples to go on. I'm going to stay here. You go on. He's just fed the 5,000 men plus women and children. And he tells the disciples, you guys go ahead. I got some things to take care of. I'll catch up. Well, in verse 24, when he says considerable distance, it's believed by many that that was at least three to four miles away. These disciples had traveled at least three to four miles away, and they're being battered and beaten by this storm, this raging storm, and you know they're way off course. They're puzzled. Life is not going the way they thought it would. Their trip, their journey is not going the way they thought. Here are these disciples out here on the Sea of Galilee. And all of a sudden, sudden Jesus comes to them just before dawn. The storm is pounding their little ship. The waves just keep on coming. And they're trying to row back on course to get to land. And I can imagine just during this all night, all night situation of this storm, some of these disciples had to look at each other and say, whose idea was this anyway? Come on, that's the first thing we say. I do it myself. Something happens in life. I get puzzled. Something doesn't fit. Something doesn't work out the way it should. I'm like, how do we even get here? Whose idea was this? And we look to blame somebody. I do. Even if it's myself. 
How did I get here? How did this happen? These guys were like, who told us to get in the boat anyway? Well, Jesus had told them. Where is Jesus? Just put yourself in the life of these disciples for a moment. Get in their head. They just watched Jesus perform these miracles, feed all these people with just some bread and fish. And Jesus says to them, hey, you guys get in that boat, I'll catch up. And for hours, they're out here battering the storm, watching themselves at the edge of their faith, at the edge of life. And they're like, Jesus sent us out here to die? Sounds like the Israelites, huh? You sent us out here just to die. We'd rather just go back. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever been in that moment where you just felt like something was right, that you had heard from God, and then it just turn, doesn't turn out the way you thought? You ever been in a relationship that you said, hey, God, God put this person in my life. They're the best thing that ever happened to me. And then it doesn't work out. And you're like, well, God, where are you? Where are you? This was your idea, Lord. This is, you ordained this to happen. You put this relationship in place. Or maybe you make a financial decision in life and you're like, you know what, I prayed about this. God opened the door. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, the financial part of it falls through. God gave us this home. And that home's got all kinds of problems. And you stop to think, God, did you really give it? Why did you give us this? We begin to question God, and that's what the disciples were doing here. Did Jesus abandon them? In your life and in situations, did Jesus abandon you? Certainly not. They're sitting there in the storm, and they're asking the wrong questions. Can it get any worse? How many of you ever been there? Life comes at you hard. You get this puzzle piece that just doesn't fit. You find yourself in a storm, and you stop and think, Jesus, can it get any worse? Oh, I'm being real today. I do. I question God all the time. I'll be a man enough to say it. God, why is this happening to me? Can it get any worse? Well, it certainly did for them, and it can for us. In the midst of this storm, they had fear. It was terrible. And Jesus, in that moment, in their panic, decides to step in and calm the situation. They asked themselves, can it get any worse? Here they are in this boat. It's being shaken to and fro. The storm is overtaking them. They're taking on water. They don't see how they're going to survive. That's a bad enough situation to be in. You find yourself in a storm in life, and you ask Jesus, God, can it get any worse? And then you look out on the water and see a ghost. You're in a situation, and you're like, I can't take any more, God. And you look out there like, are you real? Are you serious? You know, the old saying is, God will never put more on you than you can handle. I completely disagree with that statement. Because God's put me in situations before that I, my, I myself could not handle without his power and his goodness in my life. The disciples were put in a situation that was more than they could handle. They're in the storm of their life. They're sitting here watching themselves. Their life's about to come to an end. And then they see a ghost. Is that a ghost? What is that? They begin to have a new fear inside of their soul. And then here comes Jesus walking on the water. And he says, hey, it's me. It's just me. And he calms the situation inside. Here's what I want you to grab right here this morning. If you take notes, I want you to write this down. Sometimes God will 
calm the storm in your soul before he calms the storm in your circumstances. Sometimes God will calm the storm in your soul before he will calm the storm in your circumstances. Pastor, what do you mean? These guys begin to fear, feel a new fear. Just when they thought life couldn't get harder, they see what they think is a ghost. And before Jesus ever stops the storm from raging, he assures them inside that, hey, it's okay. You might be in a life situation right now that you feel like you're getting battered. You feel like you're getting tossed around. You can't keep your spiritual balance. Physically, it's wearing you down. You're, you're at the edge of your faith, and you're like, God, I just don't know how much more I can trust you. I, I believe you've got purpose here, but I just don't see it. Then all of a sudden, something comes, else comes along, and bam, you get that piece that doesn't fit into your life plan. God's not going to take the piece away necessarily because you can't complete the puzzle without that piece. The puzzle of your life cannot be completed even with those, without those that hurt, those that don't seem to fit. God may never take you out of the circumstance on this side of heaven, but he can give you healing in your soul and in your spirit and in your mind and your heart to help you get through it. We said it last week that Jesus told John the Baptist that. He said, hey, John, I'm not just your Messiah when I'm healing the blind. I'm not just your Messiah when I'm healing the lame. When I'm healing the deaf, I'm your Messiah when things aren't going so well. Jesus eventually steps into the boat. He didn't say a word. The Bible says they entered the boat, he and Peter, and the winds immediately passed. Why? Because God had to do something in the souls of the disciples first. We're talking about disciples who have witnessed Jesus do all these miracles. They have witnessed him perform all these miracles. He just fed all these people on a mountainside with very little food and baskets of food left over. Catch this. Now, they just watched him do this. And now they're doubting Jesus? They're doubting that he can perform a miracle in their life? What was the difference between all the miracles he had performed for before and the miracle that he performed now on their behalf? It was personal. This was the first time he had done something for them. We can look around and say, well, God's blessing them. Praise the Lord, he answered prayer for you. Amen, testify, sister. I'm glad God did it for you. And then we walk around with doubt. We walk around with doubt in our minds, doubt in our hearts. But Peter believed and he was passionate about the fact that God had purpose for what was taking place there's purpose in our storms there's purpose in our questions in our fears in our anxiety when we face those storms and when they were surrendered to God they serve an eternal purpose for deepening and strengthening our faith So what is it for you? What is it for you today? Oh, Pastor, I'm just sailing right along. Well, you know what? The disciples were too. I'm just doing what the Lord tells me to do. The disciples were too. You can be right in the middle of God's will, hearing from Him, in tune with Him, connected to Him, and then all of a sudden, boom, life happens. And you get that puzzle piece. I don't even know where it went. I got rid of it. You get that puzzle piece that just doesn't fit. But you have to understand that there's purpose in all things. 
It might not make any sense to you while you're going through this storm in your life. You might not understand it. It might not be for you to understand. But you have to understand that God wants to calm the storm in your soul. He is a sovereign God that loves you and cares for you unconditionally. And he may not fix your circumstances. I don't care if it's a financial problem. I don't care if it's a marital problem. I don't care if it's a relationship problem. I don't care what it is. Maybe it's a problem at work. Maybe it's an addiction that you're dealing with. If you want God to take you out of that circumstance, then first you've got to let him address your soul. You've got to let him take the fear and the anxiety and all these things in here that's going on away. You've got to look out over that water and say, Oh, that's Jesus. He came to help us after all. I promise you, if you look out there across that lake, you will see him. He is there. You begin to wonder in life, God, I don't get this. God, I don't understand what's going on. It doesn't make any sense. The puzzle just doesn't work out. There's a song, we've sang it here before, it's called Oceans. Wonderful song. I should have had Danny sing it today. But one of the lines in that song of Oceans, and you'll hear it on the radio, not classic rock station, which I enjoy. But you'll hear it on Christian radio, and it says this. God will take us deeper than our feet would ever wander so that our faith would be made stronger. Where? In the presence of our Savior. The storms of life took the disciples farther than they ever would have wandered on their own. But in the presence of Jesus, they found the faith to believe that he would take care of them. Amen? God will take care of you. Have faith and believe. You might be on the edge today of just giving up and saying, you know what? Just let the boat sink. I got insurance. Don't take that claim today. Don't give up on God. You just keep on paddling. You keep on paddling and trust him and let him heal you from the inside out. And he will do it. He'll make all the puzzle pieces just work together. Amen? Amen.